Welcome to our time of worship. A reading from Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea, that the oceans roar and foam, that the mountains tremble as the waters fill it. Going to sing our first song, There is a Redeemer. Chapter 9, verse 6, it says, Oh my God, I'm ashamed and embarrassed to lift up my voice to you. My God, for our iniquities have risen above our heads, and our guilt has grown even to the heavens. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we ought, nor loving our neighbours as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. And what we fail to do, we deserve your condemnation. We now have a time of silent prayer for you to bring your own prayers to God. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and our neighbours and to live for your honour and your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we're given these great words of hope from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. 
And Jen's going to come read with us now for Psalm 46. The nations, the nations are in chaos, and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders, and the earth melts. for this week so the good thing is uh, just to start praying for each other so uh, Dean and I start each day with prayer and uh, we try and pray for every member of the church each day and so Jen's going to come and now read for us a little bit more from Psalm 46 and then we'll have the song Amazing Grace Psalm 46 46 verse 7 the Lord of heaven's armies is here amongst us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. Thank you. 
present reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll greatly increase the human population and the number of animals here in Israel and Judah. In the past, I deliberately uprooted and tore down this nation. I overthrew it and I destroyed it and brought disaster upon it. But in the future, I've just as deliberately planted and built it up. I, the Lord, have spoken. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant for the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant. But I love them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my instructions deep in within them and I'll write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbours nor will they need to teach their relatives saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already, says the Lord. And I'll forgive their wickedness and I'll never again remember their sins. Jen's going to come and share with us now our New Testament reading. Continue our reading from Psalms, Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be honoured by every nation and I'll be honoured throughout the world. And Jen's going to come and lead us now in a time of prayer. and understand 
understand each other's differences and weaknesses and respond with love and compassion. We pray for our elders and all members of our congregation that we would seek to walk closer with you and to know your word, that it would be the strength and basis of our daily lives and all we say and all we do. And Lord, in the midst of our COVID uh, situation, we all struggle with the coronavirus in our country, but may we use it as a time to draw closer to you that we would seek understanding and patience in these circumstances and be focused on caring and supporting others at this time. Help, help each of us to be obedient to our government health guidelines. And I ask that you guide our medical and health for, for practitioners at this time. I pray for our politicians that you would strengthen them and guide them and prevent them from burnout and, and distress as they seek to lead us through this virus. Lord, for many around the world at this time, as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in countries where COVID is hitting them hard, you, our Lord, are with us. For many dangers, toils and snares, you have led us in time to come. So as Jesus calls us, we will hand over to you our trust in our loving God, who is our anchor in the storms of life. I bring before you each member of the congregation. For our men, I ask that you will lead by your example with a servant heart and godliness that shines. For our ladies, continue to guide us and develop us into a godly community of women seeking the truth of your word. We have some in our church who are struggling through ill health or other situations. So let's pray silently now for those who are on our hearts. Take from us all, Lord, sorry, take from us, Lord, all that is not godly and purify our hearts. Give all in our church a thirst for your word and truth. And we pray for spiritual revival, for your love to be evident in all we say and do, for our spiritual poverty to be made known to us. Bring us to the foot of your cross, Lord Jesus. Humble us, teach us and grow us to be just like you and your word and your love to be deep in our hearts. <clears throat> for our, our local churches, I pray for all congregations that you would protect them from illness and evil, for their ministers and priests that they would strengthen and guide them into all truth and godliness for their congregations to be united in love and for all of us to know we are one body in Christ, a family of believers of Christ the way. Lord, I think of our world. There's much suffering and we've seen just recently the extreme heat in countries in the Northern Hemisphere. We've seen the floods and the bushfires. We see what's happening in Afghanistan, the horror there, and we've seen earthquakes. We hear, hear of wars and rumours of wars. Lord, may we all see our need of you. Please heal our lands and our hearts and live, the, live lives of love and kindness to each other with you, Lord Jesus, as King. I just bring you before you in the gallery if you're into Kenya. Lord, we ask that your intervention here to provide protection from evil and from coronavirus 
the last three for the Sandbury people for being plenty and that they would know that you are with them. <coughs> the Jahara House um, in India, we thank you for Charles and Julie. And may they grow in the knowledge and the love of you. Protect them and the children in their care from all harm in the difficult uh, religious and political climate that they are currently in. Give them courage and strength to be a role for you. And we praise you, Lord, <coughs> that their new home is ready to be moved in. And this Wednesday there will be a blessing. And I just pray, Lord, that you would protect uh, this um, Christian family um, to be able to continue to minister more. Lord, for our Christian brothers and sisters worldwide, we're so grateful for being part of the Kingdom of God and the privilege of being able to pray for and support our brothers and sisters in Christ who risk um, danger or even death by confessing your name, that you are Lord. Lord, give us each an awareness of their needs. Lord, they are a shining light, glorifying your name. And we thank you for that they have the courage to confess your name. And may we be the same. And for those who persecute the name of Jesus, knowing that they need to be rescued from the evil one who rules their hearts and minds. Soften and change their hearts and turn them towards you. May you show them mercy and they come to know that there is no other name um, than the precious name of Jesus under heaven by which many must be saved. Lord, and help us um, to be kind and gentle towards our enemies. Gracious Lord, help each and every one of us to be good stewards of the blessings that you have given us and to be faithful. May we be generous and kind, pure of heart, and be willing to extend our hand to those who are troubled or lonely, the tired and the weak, and to speak only words that bring life and light. Place on our hearts the desire to be holy, as you are holy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator and our Redeemer and King. As we finish in prayer, we honour you as the way, the truth and the life. And now let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may you be all blessed today by our Lord's presence and peace, and the knowledge of who God is, the great I Am. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and all honour and glory to you, Lord Jesus, our Holy One. Help us to be faithful to you till our journey's end and finally meet you face to face. And I pray this and all of our prayers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. And our final song for the day is It is well with my soul.
worship time together today. I'm going to finish with these great, encouraging words from Romans chapter 15. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. That together you may be one voice. Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We look forward to seeing you again next week.